Mental health plans. Now, this is something that's coming up more and more and more. Um, the prevalence of mental health and the conversations around mental health are really coming to the forefront, which I think is amazing. Um, the stigma around mental health is being removed. And we've got a lot of people to thank, thank for this, such as Beyond Blue, um, Livin. These sort of charities are doing a lot to bring these to the forefront. But the impact of mental health on insurance is, is completely different. Um, insurance companies are seeing drastic increases in their claims based on mental health and musculoskeletal claims. So if you look at um, your back and your neck, um, fractures, that sort of thing, they're musculoskeletal and mental health. Um, they're the two biggest drivers of, um, of pressure on the insurance companies and they're forcing people to put their prices up, the insurance companies. Now, a mental health plan um, entitles you to a number of sessions with a specialist at a discounted rate that's subsidised by Medicare. But one thing you might not know is when you do go to the doctor to get a referral to a specialist, on the mental health plan, it's a requirement for them to put down a diagnosis. And this is something that caught me out personally and something that I wasn't aware of until I actually went through it. Um, upon giving you that mental health plan, the doctor provides a diagnosis and that's the thing that the insurance companies look at. And I believe that doing these sort of mental health plans, um, speaking to professionals, getting help, all that sort of thing should be deemed as a preventative measure. Um, but unfortunately, in the eyes of the insurance company, they don't know how to deal with this. They don't know it. And what they do, um, as I heard from an insurance company this morning, they back away from things that they don't understand. And instead of doing that, they need to creep closer to understanding how the mental health uh, plans and the different mental health um, scenarios play out so that they can offer better policies. Now, Beyond Blue that I mentioned before has been working with Mental Health Australia since 2002, um, lobbying the government, coming up with white papers, doing all these different things that talk about the fact that this is discrimination to people who have um, had mental health plans, people who have had mental health in the past and their ability not to get insurance. So there is a lot of noise around this, which is really good. And the right people are talking about it, but we need to do more in this space. And if you do have a case that you feel that you've been hard done by, by the insurance companies, there's an online survey that you can find. I'll put the links down below um, that Beyond Blue have that will capture your details so they can build their case to, to further lobby this one. But mental health plans have a huge impact on your insurance. And quite often you'll see an exclusion if you've had a mental health plan in the past. And the time frame that you have had between the mental health plan and any of your last symptoms is really important. But the other thing to note about mental health is it doesn't discriminate between specific types of mental health um, conditions. So for example, if I suffered from stress and I'm a, a woman who's about to have a child, um, I'm not only excluded from stress-related mental health claims, but I'm excluded from all mental health claims, including postnatal depression. So this is the people that I think um, are hugely affected by this and where I think a lot more work needs to be done. So if you have questions around it, please shout out, let me know, speak to someone who can help you with this because it's really important to get this done correctly.